today simply because of the amount of convenience that we are surrounded with and the amount of comfort that we are surrounded with that today even if we have one bad day people are able to pamper themselves in some way all right let's go out or you know some friend will come over and will watch something or whatever but for me i personally feel that if you can invite adversity into your life or if you if you could use your imagination to play out the theme of fear as deeply as possible in all your possible imaginations it is there that you will start coming face to face with how much of a con man or a con woman you are to yourself it has to be fear because see fear will rattle you all right so when it will start rattling you or shaking you it will shake you to such an extent that whatever is waste whatever is excess whatever is unnecessary it will start dropping off your being okay but i personally don't think there is uh, in again i'm making this clear this is for today's times that i'm talking in today's times in order to be more naked with ourselves we need to go through shit or we need to in our at least heads go through as much shit as possible that's why you'll see these psychedelics and things like ayahuasca and all you know becoming popular because unfortunately people are not able to do it by themselves mm. you know so you have to book a 6000 dollar retreat in some fucking camp somewhere and go and do ayahuasca <clears throat> whereas like again what, what is ayahuasca if not just your brain again only doing the actual work it's not the ayahuasca right? that is just one catalyst but you could have a catalyst such as a really horrible life experience you could have a catalyst such as something which you voluntarily invite into your life like for example if today i am a person who's you know decently comfortable and well to do i don't have a problem of in hindi in india we say roti kapda makan roti is bread kapda is clothing makan is the house all right so let's say i have you know the basic necessities of today's life and uh, i am even let's say a little bit wealthier than that so for someone like me to actually get naked with myself i literally should even if it is for a temporary you know period of time let's say one month let's say i travel to a country like cambodia but i don't take my bank account with me you know so whatever i have grown up being exposed to i will be exposed to the same phenomena but with a very 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 different platform where a lot has been taken away from me and a lot which has been taken away from me normally we are so used to it that we don't know how to exist without it and maybe i'm using a shitty example when it comes to just you know the bank and the this and the that but even in terms of let's say my ability to walk if suddenly tomorrow i just take crutches even if i can walk but i act one week that i am handicapped and i can't walk that will humble me in a lot of ways because i have to figure out solutions with decreased ability and as soon as i have to come face to face with okay my ability is lesser boom now you're starting to encounter your own fear that's when the rattling will happen in some way in the start because in the start you're so used to having certain ability so in today's times it is incredibly tough to get naked because simply the the yuga we live in the the eon of time we live in it is to do with virtuosity like not uh, virtuosity sorry things which are virtual and fakeness as much fakeness that we can propagate that's the culture that's the personal humanity as well so even most people who would be listening to this would be just listeners not doers and this is no disrespect to you know your audience or even my audience this is just the truth about society that if there are you mentioned david goggins let's say he has 1 million subscribers how many of those subscribers are actually doing what he talks about it's not 1 million it's very few of them for a lot of people going through content is basically intellectual masturbation mm. i that's very interesting you're right it is we do live in a very comfortable society and it sounds like you've been through a lot in your life 
I've also been through a lot in my life and I'm at a point now where I feel like in a way it was a blessing because I wouldn't be who I am today without it. Right. So I've come out the other end. If someone told me that when I was going through it, I would have shot them, <laughs> but, but now I can look at it and think like, okay, this really is like my life unfolding. And I, I am grateful for those lessons, but it, it's hard to manufacture that. Right. Cause even someone who's going to go to Cambodia without their bank account was the intention behind that. Right. So it's, it's hard to say, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I think um, for me, it sounds like where you're getting to is the nakedness comes with doing things. And if you, if you sit around just in a, you know, not doing anything and just consuming stuff, you're never going to have a chance to get naked, right? Like if you're, if you're always putting forth an aesthetic and if you're always putting forth a persona, but you're never showing up authentically and you're never authentically trying to do what you want in life, you're never going to get a humbling, right? You're always staying safe. So I think yeah. that's definitely been true for me with starting my own business. Like I've been humbled. I don't even know how many times. And I, I now I welcome it because I'm like, great, this is growth. Like I don't, I don't want to be a one-dimensional person. I don't want to show up and think I'm perfect. Like I'm we, we aren't one-dimensional. You know, that's the thing. We love to like put ourselves. But I mean online. Sometimes you can show yeah, yeah, yourself yeah. as being like, yeah. people are like, I'm starting a business. What's my persona going to be? And it's like, maybe it could just be you. Yeah. <laughs> but the truth is that even we don't. So, you know, like how I'll put this across is that if today, like technically, let's say, you know, you and me are living in a sim same housing complex. All right. And let's say there are 100 families over here. Each has, let's say, four members. I'm in India. So yeah, four members in the West, maybe two members or whatever. The single parenthood is a little bit higher over there. Um, and let's say all of us together go to a psychiatrist. All right. Just for the fuck of it. Nobody is, ex <laughs> no, no, nobody is you know, uh, demonstrating any symptoms or whatever. But if you explore any human being, and based on the kind of tests and yeah. you know practices, everyone will which... get a diagnosis. <laughs> exactly, we are all psychopaths. Yeah. yeah, but we are afraid of our own psychopathy simply because we have spent so much time living apart from it. Because you know, when we were young, we thought this is who I want to become. This is who I want to become. This is who I want to become. This is who I want to become, etc., etc., etc. We start attaching ourselves to identities at deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper levels. That finally the soul is kicking you from the inside that I'm not happy doing whatever the hell you're doing, you know. But then how many people have the guts to leave everything which, you know, is their persona and embrace their psychopathy? Because being a psychopath, again, because of language, it comes with a negative connotation. You know, everything like spiritual spirituality comes with a positive connotation. But in my opinion today, most of spirituality is spiritual ego. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I'm interested not, you know, in playing the game of duality in terms of when I want to understand things because I love truth. Even if it breaks me down, but I would rather die happily knowing that I have experienced a certain amount of truth rather than die being a goddamn king on this planet, but being totally ignorant of what actually matters at the level of the cosmos, not just my personal life. All right. So, um, just as I said, in terms of connotations, language is such a barrier that, for example, somebody being a psychopath, that doesn't mean that that's negative. It could be psychopathic in their own, like, it depends on how their consciousness is now going to regulate that psychopathy, you know, because there is somebody who cannot pay attention and the doctors will say, you know, you have that ADHD, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And children are on drugs, especially in your countries at another level. All right. But if I could figure out how to be a hundred percent at the same time in multiple different places where my attention is going automatically I'm using more of my brain than most humans actually use their brain to the extent, you know, and the same way it could be something else that I'm somebody who's so one track 
but then being that one track is really great if i want to do an invention such as creating the light bulb because until i don't solve that problem i cannot stop so if i have psychopathy of a kind where if i go into something i can't stop like what they call ocd all right you're obsessive you're compulsive you're just like i had a client once who just can't stop washing his hands if he starts washing his hands he's in canada by the way all right he can't my first client was in canada by the way but that was from alberta all right so he couldn't stop washing his hands some when he would start washing the utensils he cannot stop you know doing the dishes but just imagine if he doesn't hold himself at a place of fault automatically that's the first step from him getting out the of, of the trap of his own psychopathy because he will understand when to actually apply it when not to apply it most of us don't know when to actually apply our strengths or weaknesses because our, our weaknesses are strengths in other dimensions and our strengths are weaknesses in other dimensions you know mm -hmm.